I got it. Um, there was not a reading this morning, uh, but the reading of this morning we just sang. Um, what Jesus uh, described as the, uh, or told us was the greatest commandment. When questioned what was the greatest commandment, he said that was it. To love the Lord thy God with all thy heart, with all thy soul, with all thy mind, with all thy strength. And the second is likened to it, to love our neighbor as ourselves. Um, <clears throat> there was another song. I, I don't know if you noticed it, but there was a theme in the songs this morning. I hope you noticed that. And that we sang about God's love. Um, and, and our response to him is, is our love towards him in response to his love. There was another song I wanted to sing, but it's not in our book. I'm going to go through the lyrics real quick with you this morning. Who else commands all the hosts of heaven? Who else could make every king bow down? Who else can whisper in the darkness trembles? Only a holy God. What other beauty demands such praises? What other splendor outshines the sun? What other majesty rules with justice? Only a holy God. What other glory consumes like fire? What other power can raise the dead? What other name remains undefeated? Only a holy God. Who else can rescue me from my failing? Who else would offer his only son? Who else invites me to call him father? Only my holy God. Come and behold him, the one and the only. <clears throat> Cry out, sing holy, forever a holy God. Come and worship the holy God. <clears throat> I think that describes what we're here this morning. Um, <clears throat> sorry, I've got a little raspy voice this morning, and uh, being emotional doesn't help it. <laughs> so I hope that introduces us to the subject, and I begin this morning with a question, and the question is, do you love God? And as we go through the lesson this morning, I'm going to ask several questions, and it's not for you to answer out loud, but it's to think about in your heart. Um, I think the fact that you're here this morning answers affirmative to number one, that we're here because we love God. <clears throat> Sorry. Um, why do you love God? Why do you love God? Um, I think this answers that. 1 John chapter 4, verses 9 and 10. <clears throat> In this, the love of God was manifest towards us, that God has sent His only begotten Son into the world, that we might live through Him. In this is love, not that we loved God, but that he loved us and sent his son to be the propitiation for our sins. <clears throat> Said simply, <laughs> further in the chapter, John says, we love him because he first loved us. And so the verse <clears throat> that has been the subject of our study, uh, really it began the, the first Sunday of this month, when John talked to, us, talked to us about who is God. And Ian introduced this verse to us last week, and we sang it just a minute ago, or these verses. Then one of the scribes, having heard them, came and having heard them reasoning together, perceiving that he had answered them well. And he's talking about those who came te to test Jesus with questions trying to trip him up. And in all of those things, he answered them well. He shut them down. And so he wants to make one more run at it here. And it says, he asked him, which is the first commandment of all? You know, this was something that was debated among the, the Pharisees, among the, those who knew the law, the doctors of the law. What was the greatest commandment? They're according to the, the counting of, of the... Um, the Jewish religious leaders, there were 613 thou shalt and thou shalt nots. And so, you know, they, they debated back and forth what was most important. Maybe this is a way to trip Jesus up and to perhaps uh, 
get some uh, to go against him if he answered contrary to what their answer was. But Jesus gave the righteous and perfect answer. And Jesus answered him. He said, the first of all the commandments is, Hear, O Israel, the Lord your God, the Lord, the Lord our God, the Lord is one. And you shall love the Lord your God with all your heart, with all your soul, with all your mind, and with all your strength. This is the first commandment. You know, Jesus said this and the second, to love our neighbor as ourself, encompassed basically all of the law and the prophets. They all hung up on these two commandments. This was a summary of, if we keep these two, we'll keep the rest of God's commandments. And the first is to love the Lord that you're God with all your heart, your soul, your mind, and your strength. Again, Brother Ian opened uh, this subject last week when he talked about loving God with all of our heart. And he talked about that our heart is the seed of our emotions and our passions. And he and, uh, what, did a great job of, of um, explaining that from God's Word and, and the fact that we, have to, we need to enthrone God in His rightful place in our heart above everything else. We have no other gods. We have no idols for him to compete with in our heart. That he wants all of our heart. <clears throat> he deserves all of our heart. He deserves all of our love. <clears throat> with all of your life, with all of our life. And we talked, all of your soul, I'm sorry, which we said, which he introduced and said, you know, really refers to our life. You know, in pl other places, this word that is... Um, uh, defined as soul here. In other places, it's translated as life. Um, and there's a couple of specific places, such as Matthew ch chapter 6 and verse 25, where Jesus said, do not worry about your life, which is the same word that is trans for, uh, translated soul here, as to what you will eat or what you will drink. And again, John 15 and 13, greater love has no man than this, that he lay down his life. And it's the same word that is translated soul here for his friends. So the encompassment of who we are uh, and all that we are and all that we have encompassed in our life here, our life, our soul, with all of your mind. And brother, Lord willing, Brother Monty will talk about that next week. It's our intellect. So the, the, the heart is the seat of, of the emotions and the passions, and our mind is the seat of our intellect, our logic. Our ability to comprehend and know and understand and know God's word and God's will. And with all of your strengths, uh, with all of our abilities and all of our energies, and we're going to talk about that this morning. How do we love God with all of our strength? And, um, you know, one of the things that Ian talked about last week was the, the definition of love, that how that pendulum swings sometimes. And people have said, well, love is not an emotion it's an action. And he said, no, it's, it's not only an emotion, but it, it is emotion. We love God with our emotions, but we also love God with our actions. Our actions are a result of the love of God in our hearts and in our minds. And the word that is <clears throat> translated here, strength, is iskus. I guess that's how you pronounce it. Uh, which means force or forcefulness. It is translated ability, might, power. Strength. It is our actions. It is loving God through our actions. To love God with our strength is to love Him with our actions, with our energy and with our effort, with our abilities, our talents, our resources, that which He has blessed us with and we possess. And when you think about it, all of the things that we love God with are the things that He has given us, right? All we're doing is we're returning the love to him with the things that he has given us. He's given us life and breath and all things. And so it's a return of, of admiration and thankful, thankfulness and love for all he's done for us. And he wants all of our strength in everything that we do. We, we, uh, we worship where we love God in everything that we do. And we'll probably not get too deep into that specific part of it this morning. But it is motivated by the love of God in our hearts. It is guided by the love of God in our mind, his word, in his will. And so we see how all of these things work together. Our heart, our soul, our strength, our mind, all of these things work together in loving God. 
Um, I, I thought about what is, is encompassed in loving God with our strength. I came up with this list. <laughs> and, and this is by all means not all encompassing, but it's our actions. It's the going, the doing, the reading, the speaking, the helping, the caring, the pleading, the warning, the encouraging, the leading, the serving, the giving, the caring, the feeding, the clothing, the visiting, the calling, the driving, the picking up, the teaching, the listening, the paying, the praying, the singing, the maintaining, the counseling, the planning, the cleaning, the cooperating, the seeking, and the finding, the seeing, and the comforting, the studying. <clears throat> and we could go on and on, couldn't we? <clears throat> to list all of the actions that we have in serving God and being of service. All of these things done in service to God. It is being a doer and not a hearer only. It is building our house upon a rock by doing the things that Jesus has told us. It is always abounding in the work of the Lord. As Paul said, knowing that your labor in the Lord is not in vain. It is our actions motivated by love. It is all done in love. Remember Paul said in, in 1 Corinthians 13, Though I speak with the tongues of men and angels, but have not love, I have become a sounding brass or a clanging cymbal. And though I give the, have the gift of prophecy and all understanding and understand all mysteries and knowledge, and though I have all faith so that I could remove mountains, but if I have not love, I am nothing. And though I bestow all my goods to feed the poor, and though I give my body to be burned, but have not love, it profits me nothing. So all of our actions... All of our service to God must be motivated and done in love. <clears throat> to love God with our strength is to love Him with our actions, motivated by His love in our heart, the inspiration. In Luke chapter 7, we read this account. that Then one of the Pharisees asked him to eat with him, and when he went to the Pharisee's house, he sat down to eat. <clears throat> and behold, a woman in the city who was a sinner when she knew that Jesus sat at the table in the Pharisee's house, brought an alabaster flask of fragrant, fragrant oil and stood at his feet behind him weeping. So the first thing we want to notice here is <clears throat> this is a woman who knew of Jesus. This is not long before <laughs> Jesus goes to the cross, so it's deep into his personal ministry. And this is a woman who is become acquainted through Jesus, through what she has heard, and she has a desire to see Jesus. And she comes, it says, with a, a flask of fragrant oil. Perhaps this was going to be offered as a gift to Jesus. I don't know. The scripture doesn't tell us. But we'll see how she uses it. Um, and she began to wash his feet with her tears, and wiped them with the hairs of her head. So the what next, I kind of left off the end there. When she sees Jesus, when she comes into his presence, she is overwhelmed. This is a woman who, the scripture says, she was a sinner. This is a woman who recognized her sin, who recognized her need and her longing for forgiveness, for healing, for cleansing. And she comes to Jesus because she believes that he can provide those things. And so when she comes into the presence of Jesus, she is overwhelmed. And she begins to weep. And as she begins to weep, her tears, as she's standing behind Jesus, begin to fall at his feet, on his feet. And she began to wash his feet with her tears and wipe them with the hair of her head. <clears throat> So as she sees her tears are falling on his feet, she drops to her knees and she begins to wipe off the tears with her hair, <clears throat> which was something that was somewhat humiliating because that was something that was um, a kind of a crown was her hair, but she, she took it down. It was kind of a shame for her hair to, to hang down, but she did to wash the tears off of his feet. And she took that oil that she had would brought and she <clears throat> anointed his feet and she kissed his feet you know this all kind of seems bizarre doesn't it it seems kind of bizarre that this woman uh would behave that way but think about it for a minute how many tears have you shed at jesus feet 
How many times being overcome in whatever situation, whether it is sin, whether it is grief, whether it is any other situation that you've come to Jesus and you've fallen at his feet and you've shed tears at his feet. <clears throat> now when the Pharisee who had invited him saw this, he spoke to himself saying, <clears throat> this man, if he were a prophet, would know what manner of woman this is who is touching him, for she is a sinner. <clears throat> this man's name is Simon. We're going to see here in a minute. Simon does not understand who Jesus is. He also does not understand what's going on <clears throat> with this woman. <clears throat> but this woman understands who Jesus is. It is Simon who is blinded to the truth of Jesus. What is blinding him? It's his pride, his arrogance. His thinking that his righteousness, his self-righteousness is sufficient. And being blind to all of the need that he has for forgiveness, for, for God's love, for God's compassion. And so he looks down on this woman with condemnation. <clears throat> but Jesus, knowing his heart, says to Simon, I have something to say to you. And he said, teacher, say it. He said there was a certain creditor who had two debtors and one owed 500 denarii and the other 50. And when they had nothing with which to repay, he freely forgave them both. Tell me, therefore, which of them will love him more? Which of them will love him more? And Simon answered and said, I suppose the one who for he forgave more. And he said to him, you have rightly judged. <clears throat> and he turned to the woman. So he turns his back to Simon and he turns to the woman. And he said, do you see this woman? I entered your house and you gave me no water for my feet. That was customary. When you entered the house of someone, they usually had a, a servant who would... He washed the dust, the dirt off of the guests, off of their feet as they entered. But Simon did not do this for Jesus. <clears throat> but she has washed my feet with her tears and wiped them with the hairs of her head. You gave me no kiss. That was the normal greeting for someone entering your house. Is you, would, you would greet them with a, a kiss to show them welcome. Simon did not do this for Jesus. He said, but this woman is not ceased to kiss my feet since the time I came in. You did not anoint my head with oil, but this woman has anointed my feet with fragrant oil. Therefore I say to you, her sins, which are many, are forgiven, for she loved much. But to whom little is forgiven, the same loves little. Then he said to her, your sins are forgiven. And those who sat at the table with him began to say within themselves, who is this that even forgives sins? And then he said to the woman, your, your faith has saved you. Go in peace. What do we see in this woman's actions? What do you see in her actions? Number one, she came to Simon's house because she sought Jesus. You know, Ian talked last week about our heart being broken, about being torn open, being broken being exposed, the, the recognition of our sin and our need for God and for his forgiveness and his holiness and his righteousness. When she came and saw Jesus, her heart was broken. She recognized her sin and she longed for forgiveness, which resulted in her tears and her actions. Her tears and her washing the, and anointing Jesus' feet were her appeal for forgiveness. She recognized his holiness. She recognized his love and compassion. And she recognized that he was worthy of her love and of her worship. <clears throat> Another question. <laughs> How much do you love Jesus? How much has he forgiven you? Are you moved 
to worship and love him with all of your heart, with all of your soul, with all of your mind, and with all of your strength. <clears throat> to love God with our strength is to love him with our actions, motivated by his love in our heart and directed by his word in our mind. In Mark chapter 9, we read this account. Now, after six days, Jesus took Peter, James, and John and led them up a high mountain apart by themselves, and he was transfigured before them. His clothes became shining, exceeding white, like snow such as no launderer on earth can whiten them. And Elijah appeared to them with Moses, and they were talking with Jesus. So it is Peter, James, and John who Jesus invites to go up on the mountain with him for this purpose. They're going to witness something that they are not going to really comprehend for a while. But it's something important for them to see, and that is Jesus being glorified. In his raiment, his clothes just become glowing white, and suddenly there is Moses and Elijah there with him, and they are talking. And... Peter answered and said to Jesus, Rabbi, it is good for us to be here. Let us make three tabernacles, one for you and one for Moses and one for Elijah, because he did not know what to say, for they were greatly afraid. <clears throat> this was such a spectacular sight. It was, it was too good, right? Um, Kind of like Isaiah in the throne room of God looking around and going, I don't belong here. I'm sure that's how Peter, James, and John felt to be on this holy ground, to witness these things, to not understand them, but to be open in, in complete awe of what they are seeing. And Peter, overwhelmed, so to speak, feels like he, has, he needs to say something, but he doesn't really know what to say. So he, he says... Let's build three tabernacles, one for you, one for Moses, and one for Elijah. And a cloud overshadowed them, and the voice came out of the cloud saying, This is my beloved son, hear him. <clears throat> you know, there are times in our emotional love, in our, um, in our um, love for God, that we feel motivated, but with our, we're passionate and motivated, and we want to do something for God. We want, to, we want to express that love in some way. And sometimes we don't know how to do that, but God is telling us that Jesus does. Jesus gives us and directs us on how we, what we do with that enthusiasm, what we do with that passion, what we do with that love. Jesus guides us through his word. And I don't want to get too far into this because this is a lot of what Monty's going to talk about next week, but Quickly from Psalm 119, just some verses. Blessed are the undefiled in the way who walk in the law of the Lord. Blessed are those who keep his testimonies, who seek him with the whole heart. They also do no iniquity. They walk in his ways. You have commanded us to keep your precepts diligently. Oh, that my ways were directed to keep your statute. Then I would not be ashamed when I look into all your commandments. I will praise you with uprightness of heart. When I learn your righteous judgments, I will keep your statutes. Oh, do not forsake me utterly. How can a young man cleanse his way? By taking heed to your word. With my whole heart I have sought you. Oh, let me not wander from your commandments. Your word I have hidden in my heart that I might not sin against you. And that heart is the mind. Blessed are you, O oh Lord. Teach me your statutes. Jesus put it simply this. If you love me, Keep my commandments. To love God with our strength is to love him with our actions, motivated by his love in our hearts and directed by his love in our mind, his word, to fulfill our calling in Christ. One more example, one more uh, passage to look at. In John, the 21st chapter, we read after Jesus' resurrection that he appeared to his disciples another time. And on this occasion, Peter and James and John and some of the other disciples, while waiting to, to get their direction, instructions on what they were going to do next, Peter says, Let's go, I'll go a fishing. 
And they said, we'll go with you. So they all went fishing. They got on a boat. They got out there. They spent all night. They didn't catch any fish. <clears throat> you remember that story earlier too, don't you? <laughs> this isn't the first time that's happened. <clears throat> and so we pick it up here in verse 4. But when the morning had come, Jesus stood on the shore, and yet the disciples did not know that it was Jesus. Then, then Jesus said to them, Children, have you any food? And they said to him, No. So Jesus calls out to them. They don't recognize Jesus, but he says, Have you caught anything? No, we haven't caught anything. And he said to them, Cast the net on the right side of the boat, and you will find some. And so they cast, and now they were not able to draw it in because of the multitude of fishes. You remember when Jesus first called Peter and James and John to follow him, this same, this same type of event happened then. Therefore, that disciple whom Jesus loved, being John, said to Peter, It is the Lord. And when Simon Peter heard that it was the Lord, he put on his outer garment, for he had removed it, and he plunged into the sea. <clears throat> Peter had to do something. <laughs> he couldn't wait for the boat to get there. He was swimming. He wanted to get there. We skip down to verse 15. So Jesus had prepared them breakfast, and they sat and they ate, and they recognized that it was Jesus. And so when they had eaten breakfast, Jesus said to Simon, Simon, son of Jonah, do you love me more than these? And he said to him, yes, Lord, you know that I love you. And he said to him, feed my lambs. So there's debate over what Jesus was referring to by these, whether it was, you love me more than these fish, that you, you had to go fish, he already told him, I want to make you a fisher of men. Or was he referring to, do you love me more than the other disciples? Because remember what Peter said, though everybody else forsake you, I never will. And what happened? Peter did, right? He denied Jesus three times. It's something that's weighed heavy on Peter's heart ever since. And so Jesus asked him, do you love me? And he says, I do. He said, then feed my lambs. And he said to him a second time, Simon, son of Jonah, do you love me? And he said, yes, Lord, you know that I love you. And he said to him, tend my sheep. And he said to him the third time, Simon, son of Jonah, do you love me? And Peter was grieved because he said to him the third time, do you love me? And he said to him, Lord, you know all things. You know that I love you. And he said to him, feed my sheep. Most assuredly, I say to you, when you were younger, Jesus speaking to Peter, you will gird yourself and walk where you wish, but when you are old, you will stretch out your hands and another will gird you and carry you where you do not wish. This he spoke, signifying by what death he would glorify God. And when he had spoken this, he said to him, follow me. <clears throat> Jesus asked Peter three times if he loved him. And Peter told him three times yes. And Jesus said, then put your love into action. Then love me with your strength. Feed my sheep. Tend my lambs. Do you love God? If you love God, love him with all of your strength and use your abilities and energies to worship him in spirit and in truth. To keep his commandments to fulfill your calling by always abounding in the work of the Lord and as Ian the verse that Ian spoke on also last week present your body a living sacrifice wholly acceptable to God which is your reasonable service that we submit to him in all of our lives if we love God Peter do you love me Jesus asks you and I, do you love me? Then keep my commandments. Then fulfill my mission in you. Always be about doing my will in your lives because I've called you for that purpose. <clears throat> never knowing the minds of those present this morning, if you've never obeyed the gospel of Jesus Christ, you know, like the woman who fell at Jesus' feet, in an appeal for forgiveness, Peter said that baptism also now saves us. Not the putting away of the filth of the flesh, 
but it is an appeal to God for a clean conscience. It is our way of being born again, being baptized into Christ, our way of accepting him to receive his forgiveness and his healing and to begin our walk with him. If you've not ever done that this morning or if your heart is broken this morning for whatever reason and we can assist you this morning with prayer, we invite you to come forward while we stand to sing the song that's been selected. <laughs>